By now, most of us have read The Hero's Journey. It was first published in the 1980s by Joseph Campbell. It's a common template that involves a hero who goes on an adventure, finds victory, and comes home transformed, reflecting the three phases of gradual awakening. My question today is not whether you're on a hero's journey, but which of the 12 stages have you moved through? And are you stuck in one place, unable to get all the way through your awakening? If you're ready for a reminder about these 12 stages, either to see where you are now, or if you'd like to find out whether you've become stuck and how to get through your spiritual journey once and for all so you can move forward to a new beginning, stay tuned. This podcast is all about helping you with your spiritual growth so you can overcome obstacles and manifest your destiny to crystallize and materialize any dream, basically to have success on life's journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. So let's get started. Hi there and welcome. My name is Ramey like Do Re Me. I'm a best-selling author and creator of the Get Unstuck Revolution. I help extraordinary women just like you dissolve the obstacles in your path so you can bring success to you. Now let's get started with today's video. Okay, let me jump off the screen here and switch to my laptop. And you guys are welcome to join me on video or on the audio. If you're listening on iTunes or one of the other ones, you can jump over to my website at unlockyourhiddenpower.com. And that's where you'll find the video. And we are going to be using a graphic today. So this is your cue to jump over to the video if you'd like. All right. Most of us have read or at least heard about the hero's journey. It's a common template that involves a hero who goes on an adventure, finds victory, and comes home transformed. What you may not know is that it dates back to 1871, and it's been commonly seen in mythology, psychology, and anthropology. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Joseph Campbell actually identified 17 stages, but for today, we're only talking about the 12 common stages of gradual awakening and that we may not need to move through all 12. By the way, this alone is where some people get stuck on their track to success, not realizing they've completed their tasks early and now they're actually on their next journey. If you'd like to see success and full abundance along life's journey, and if you're wanting to tap into a greater knowingness and align with the higher consciousness of your infinite self, instead of the lower ego thinking and negative thoughts that push success away, then this is for you. It's time to be unabashedly, unapologetically, happily untethered to ego thinking. It's time to align with the higher energies of our soul's path instead. So this episode today is for you if you wonder, what if my journey isn't turning out like I'd hoped? Can I skip some steps and complete my journey more quickly? How does this hero's journey relate to my own spiritual journey? Yes, these episodes are about how to find your hidden power when you want to transform challenges into successes. I like to call it the audacity of alchemy. Because when we're feeling stuck, it's never the situation, it's never the journey that has us stuck. It's our energy about it that's become stuck in anxiety, overwhelm, doubts, worries, frustrations, indecision, and even anger. And often this is because of a spiritual injury that we've experienced some kind of a hidden trauma. So it isn't the pain of our situation or the pain of our journey. It's the pain of not being connected in the natural energy of who we really are, of being connected to that magical part of us that's a creative vibrational being who can use positive energies to create what we want and bring it into physical manifestation along our way. We can allow our manifestations to materialize and not get stuck in the negative vibrations that block them. These positive energies that we talk about so much are where we find the magic of alchemy because our choice of frequency, our choice of those positive thoughts and emotions can change the course of our journey. And that's what we're talking about today is the hero's journey or our spiritual journey. Now, most of us have read or at least heard about the hero's journey. Maybe you're on your own spiritual journey right now, right in the thick of things. Or maybe you recently completed a leg of your journey and you've come out the other side, hopefully in one piece. So I'd like you to just quickly identify either the, either the journey that you're on right now that's tripping you up and you just can't seem to get through it, 
or think of a journey you've been on recently. Maybe you went through bankruptcy or a divorce, maybe a business partnership fell apart, something that was challenging and that just gripped your life for a while. And make a quick note of what that was, just a quick bullet point. We're going to revisit that in just a minute. Now, the typical hero's journey begins with something voluntary, part of ordinary life, maybe a trip to the grocery store, and then something involuntary happens, and suddenly there's a call to action, some kind of obstacle, an opportunity to step up, and the quest begins. Along our way, we meet a mentor, or perhaps we're influenced by a book or a movie, and then by the end, there's a death of ego, a death of control, a death of an, of an outdated idea, some kind of surrender. Maybe we surrender to a new way of being, leaving behind who we were forever. And through this journey, we become a new version of ourselves, because this journey is all about gradual awakening. We're uncovering powers and strengths we didn't know we had. So that's the typical hero's journey. All right. Maybe something didn't turn out perfectly like we hoped it would, and we discover, well, that's part of the journey, that it wasn't meant to be perfect, but we were meant to discover a new version of ourself. No matter what we've gone through, it creates a new beginning. And then it cycles again. And the new version of who we are begins a new hero's journey. Okay. Now, you can Google the hero's journey and find lots and lots of information about it. And if you look it up on Wikipedia, which I had never done until this week, you'll see a chart that outlines how different people have interpreted this over time. So I'll leave this added research up to you if you'd like to go a little deeper. But for today, I'd like to keep it simple and especially focus on which stages we've passed and where we might be stuck. And spoiler Spoiler alert, some people get stuck right at stage number 10, which we'll talk about. So with this idea of keeping it simple, here's an overview, and I'll put it on the screen for you here. The first thing you'll notice is we're going to cycle through different stages as we grow and learn. Each time we become a better version of ourselves and cycle through all 12 stages, we're back at the top, ready to begin a new journey as we keep growing. So first, there at the top of the cycle, you'll see that we're in our ordinary, everyday, day-to-day -day life. Then we receive some kind of calling or a call to action. We may stumble right here and refuse the calling as we consider how difficult our task might be. If we continue, we meet a mentor or even more than one mentor, maybe a book or an author, a movie, something that influences us. And next, we'll very soon cross a threshold. After making the crossing, we're tested. And then next, we're required to do some inner work, or we may face a deep inner crisis. And this brings about a death and a rebirth, perhaps a death of our ego thinking, especially if we're going through some kind of spiritual awakening or an ascension. Yes, for some of us, we go through a death of our ego thinking, and this is a good thing because it marks a new beginning. After defeating our ego or our fears, we'll find our reward or our treasure. And for some people, their journey may end right here. For others, there's an unexpected layer that pops up right on the heels. They'll have another threshold across, maybe the same threshold or a similar threshold, but a deeper or more enhanced lesson. And then we're on the path back home. But we may have a final and much more dangerous task to get through. And this is the stage that I spoke of a minute ago where some people really get stuck. Because if we fail this final test, not only is it a failure for us, but others may also suffer. But if we succeed, then we'll return back to our ordinary world, a changed person. So that's your overview. All right. Now, in a minute, we're going to look a little closer and see which step you may be stuck on. Because when we think of patterns, it could be that the reason we keep getting stuck at the same lesson over and over is because we get stuck in one of these stages and haven't moved through that lesson yet. I'm sure we can all think of someone who just goes into hiding rather than choosing to step up to a better version of who they are. No judgment. It just happens sometimes. We get stuck in the really tough lessons. Okay, we're going to zero in on each one of these stages with some short images that I'll put up on the screen here, and I think this will make it really easy to follow along. 
as I mentioned earlier, there have been many, many people who have used this since the 1800s. So you may be familiar with a slightly different version than what we see today. So I'd like you just to reflect back on either the journey you're on right now that's tripping you up and you just can't seem to get through it, or think of a journey you've been on at another time. Maybe it was a health issue or your family split apart. Maybe you lost a business or started a new business. Something that was challenging and that just gripped your life for a while. And have that challenge in mind as we revisit the 12 stages of the hero's journey. All right, and here comes our starting point. This is stage one, our everyday life. The beginning of the journey reflects our here and now, our status quo, our everyday life. And this is often the way things are and maybe the way things have always been. We're oblivious to what's coming. Now, a while ago, I asked you to remember a journey you've been through. As you do that, can you remember back to the beginning of the challenge when you were living an ordinary life, oblivious to what was coming? Just hold that thought as we continue on to stage two. And this is our call to action stage. Here is where we receive an unexpected, sometimes mystical call to action. It may feel spiritual. We get a sign or a symbol that kickstarts our quest. It's an opportunity to step up. We don't necessarily know what's happening. So we may be filled with confusion. And we certainly don't know whether we'll succeed. Now, for me, when I started my ascension, I quite frankly thought I was losing my mind. So whatever the call to action is, it disrupts our ordinary world and presents a challenge or a quest that must be undertaken. So can you remember your call to action back at the beginning of your journey? Okay, let's move on to the next stage. And this is stage number three. We may refuse the call. Although a part of us may feel eager to accept the challenge, we'll have doubts and fears to overcome. We're second guessing whether we're up for the challenge. So we may initially try and refuse our calling. It may seem too much to handle. Our everyday life feels much safer and more rational than the unknown road ahead. This is where some people just dive under the nearest rock. <laughs> so do you remember going through this stage? Or perhaps is this where you stopped because you simply couldn't overcome the fears? It was just too much to deal with. And if you did initially refuse the calling, have you found that the universe keeps reminding you, tapping you on the shoulder to let you know that you've been called to a journey? All right, let's move on to the next stage. And this is where we meet the mentor. We don't know what to do and what's beginning to feel like an abyss, and we desperately need guidance. We turn to a mentor, maybe even more than one mentor, maybe an author, for advice, skills, training, to find some hidden power within us that we know is there if we could just find it. And so we're given something of great importance by this mentor, an insight, sage advice, practical training, or even self-assurance. And we find the strength and courage to begin our quest. We find the strength and courage to begin our transformation. All right. As you reflect on your own journey, did you find just one mentor? Did you take advantage of several? Which one helped you the most? And who helped you the least? And most of all, what did you learn? As we're going through a spiritual awakening or even an ascension, this one stage might just not be the most important one. Let me say this again. This one stage might be the one where you don't want to try and go it alone, but you want to try and go through it with a mentor or someone who can give you some added insight. All right, here comes the next stage. And this is the threshold. We now feel prepared to cross the threshold from the known into the unknown. We may be reluctant or we may be 100% committed. We may go willingly, or we may feel a push or a pull, but either way, we are moving forward little by little. Okay, make a note. This is a checkpoint. Did you willingly go through the threshold? Did you feel a push-pull right here, vacillating, unsure, or are you still stuck right here, unable to walk through the threshold? If this is the case, well, perhaps you might go back one step and look for a mentor, an author, a podcaster, a book, a coach, a movie that's influential, someone who can help you. 
super important right here to get some help going through the threshold to be sure you make it through to the other side. All right, next stage is called trials and errors. Now, out of our comfort zone, we're faced with tests and obstacles. These may be physical, mental, spiritual, or all the above. They may shake everything we thought we knew to the core. So we reflect on what we've learned so far. We feel like we can get through the journey. We want to get through our journey, and we're better about not letting doubts and fears overcome us. We know we must overcome each challenge we're presented because it's developing our insights and our values and who we are. One thing to remember here is to keep an eye on our positive thoughts because these thoughts and emotions and energies that we carry have everything to do with how we progress on our journey. In fact, they can literally change the course of our journey, making it easier so we can go fluidly right through it. So along the way, let's keep an eye on the positives and keep looking for the blessings. Okay. Reflecting on what you've gone through in your journey, is this where you are in the stage where you're being tested? Or have you made it through the initial obstacles to the other side? What have you learned so far? What insights have you garnered? All right, let's move on to the next stage, and this is number seven, the inner conflict. In this stage, we must summon all our power to conquer what may be our greatest fear. We may not even know what that fear is yet. This is an incredible inner battle that we've never had to face, and we must be willing to go deeper inside and pull it out by its roots. We may also take some time right here to reflect on the journey so far in order to find the courage to continue. Taking a brief pause helps us understand the importance of what we're facing and that we need to let go of what no longer serves us. You know, this inner conflict is another common place where people get stuck. They think they have to find what's blocking them. And honestly, sometimes this is nearly impossible to find. This is why you hear me say it so often, to focus on the positives, focus on the blessings, and let that carry you through. Don't allow yourself to get up here to give up or get hung up right here looking for the elusive block that you may never find. The more we keep stepping forward, one step at a time, the more insights will reveal themselves along the way. Take a pause and find the courage to continue. And this will lead you to stage number eight. This is the death and the rebirth. In facing our greatest fears, we know that some form of metaphorical death must take place. We're letting go of outdated or fixed ideas. We're letting go of perspectives that no longer serve us. And we're letting go of negative ego thinking we're slaying the dragon, and this will help us to fulfill our destiny and reach our journey's end. And this is actually a high point to our story. We're putting everything on the line, and we're willing to walk away from anything that no longer works. We're just done. We're beginning to understand that life may never be what it was ever again, and this is a good thing. So as you look at your own journey, what have you let go of? What still needs to go? And remember, it's never the journey that has us stuck. It's our emotions about it that keep us stuck. So be sure and ask what emotions need to go. All right. And this will bring us to stage number nine. This is the treasure. After defeating our fears, surviving our rebirth, and finally overcoming our greatest challenge, we're transformed into a new being, stronger and often with a reward or some kind of treasure. Our prize well, it may be a material object, or it may be a secret we've uncovered. Perhaps it's higher knowledge or a greater insight, but whatever it is, it is an absolute treasure. Now, this is important, so heads up. Often we think this is the end of our journey, but sometimes what we really need is to prepare for one more leg of the journey, so this is where we need to pay attention. I'll give you an example. I don't know if you saw the most recent version of A Star is Born from a few years ago, but toward the end of the movie, Jack had confronted his drug and alcohol abuse. He'd made it through rehab and come out the other side as a much better person. And the treasure, 
besides his sobriety, was in going home to his family. And that could have been the reward and the end of the story. And for some people who go through rehab, they take the tiger by the tail and overcome their addictions for sure. For Jack, he had a very brief meeting with Allie's manager, as you remember, and with just a few words, he sort of went on into a tailspin, and he started looking at what a failure he'd been and what a failure he felt like. He looked at how he could have single-handedly ruined her career and still could. Instead of recognizing that there was one more leg to his journey, instead of recognizing that there was one more leg to this journey, well, as happens in every rendition of this movie, he leaves her and he leaves this world. So we need to be skilled at recognizing when we've completed the journey and whether there's one more task, especially if we're thinking things didn't turn out exactly as we planned. That may be because we aren't quite complete in our quest. Let me say that again. If we're thinking things didn't turn out exactly as we planned, that may be because we aren't quite complete in our quest. Now, keep in mind, this material that we're reviewing isn't hard and fast. These are patterns that have been seen for most people throughout mythology and the study of psychology and anthropology. Just because an author or a researcher has identified these stages doesn't mean you'll follow them exactly. Make sense? There may be exceptions. For instance, you may be a catalyst for someone else's journey, and that's a completely different template. But if you're on a quest, some kind of spiritual awakening, or going through an ascension, then this template might be useful for you. Just don't get hung up in any one stage. If this template works for you, then it works for you. Now, for some of you, your journey may be on speed dial and you get through the insights super fast. You get through the threshold and the reward comes quickly. For others, you may trip and stumble a few times, so I do want you to take a minute to think about different challenges you've had throughout life. Some have solved themselves really quickly, right? And others have drug on for years sometimes, with you becoming stuck at different points along the way. So think of this as a template. These stages are a guide. It's a template that you can use to see where you might get stuck and even where you might skip over some steps because the insights have already come to you. Maybe you just didn't recognize it. Make sense? All right. For some of us, we're at this stage where we get our reward, and then we suddenly realize, oops, there's another leg to our journey, just like Jack discovered after he came home from rehab, only to receive his next challenge from the manager who invalidated him. And if that's the case for you, if you see that you might have one more leg of the journey to complete, well, this is not the time to give up and throw in the towel. We have to get really good at spotting where we are on our journey. Okay. Let's continue with the last couple of stages if they relate to you. And stage number 10 is the path home. As we've been talking about, now that we have our reward, it's time to make our way home. This stage is where we sometimes see one last push. Remember that first threshold where we were being asked to go from the known to the unknown, to be willing to take on new ground that might seem unfamiliar? Well, right here, a new layer may appear, a moment where we must choose between our own personal objectives and that of a higher calling. Maybe things didn't go quite like we planned because now we're going to up-level one more time. Any way you cut it, the quest may not have turned out the way you expected, and we may even stand on the verge of absolute despair right when we thought we were on the path home. Just remember, keep a positive thought and keep looking for the blessings. Can you relate to this final push? <laughs> I know I can. So stage number 11, our return. We've come through the other side, and the quest has changed who we are. The old challenges that once plagued us have been solved, where a new person changed in some way as a result of our journey and the lessons we've learned. We're better than before, and our thoughts are higher and better. We're cleansed and reborn, and we have finally returned home. And this is where we cycle back, and now we're at a new beginning. And this is what some call the elixir stage. We return with the elixir, the elixir being the final reward. We now look forward to the expression of who we are now. We look forward to the start of a new life, a new beginning. This final reward brings celebration, self-realization, and an end 
to the challenge. And this ending represents three things, change, success, and proof of the journey. We've returned to where we started, but things will never be the same. As we settle into a new normal, we know that a new journey will present itself because now we're ready for a new beginning. Remember always, as we empower ourselves towards self-expression and who we are at our core, without the negative thoughts and emotions that can drain us, we're choosing a higher frequency, higher and better thoughts because our choice of frequency, our choice of a more positive emotion helps us along our journey. In fact, it may change the course of our journey, especially the hero's journey. So reflecting back on everything we covered today, how can you apply what you've learned? Can you match this template to your current spiritual journey? Did you see a place where you've become stuck or can you pat yourself on the back for continuing to move through your transformation? Well, I hope this helps you as you're using the powers of alchemy to transform challenges and obstacles into positive new successes. This podcast is all about helping you have success on your spiritual growth journey. It's all about getting unstuck by unlocking your hidden power. If you still can't get your head around what's got you stuck, you can tell me about it. You can send me a question to questions at unlockyourhiddenpower.com, or you may not know that you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with your own personal unstuckologist, that's me, by visiting instantbreakthroughsession.com. This private session is designed to help you tap into your greatest resource, that's you, and together we can make quite a team toward calling in the transformational powers of alchemy. In our time together, we'll uncover your single biggest step point, you know, the one you can't see, and we'll also go over the most genius way to create clarity so you can just move forward while one obstacle after another is obliterated. And we'll create a strategy to get you moving in a really good direction, the one that's aligned with your life purpose. If this sounds like a match made in heaven, you can hop on over to instantbreakthroughsession.com right now and book the time slot that works best for you. Well, thanks for joining me today, and I'm wishing you a life filled with all the alchemy you need to bring success to you. Feel free to share this video with anyone you know who's feeling stuck, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.